was uh, the shrine was the showman. And he would open it up and touch the flint to create sparks and then he would light the candle and set his hand it up. It just meant it was a more heavy duty kind than the kind of normal just bowing. But in Shingo, the bow was not just simple bows, but we think it was the two bows and the floor flaps. Okay. And um, everything comes out of something sacred. And what happens is um, the sacred is uh, the sacred is the sacred. And so there's a tendency to take the sacred, reduce it to the social. And so in doing that, the sacred is the sacred. Uh, it's reduced to ritual or form. Okay. And so um, occasionally, doors to the shrine open, the candles are lighted, which just means you're upping it. The game was now on a different level. So uh, we're kind of at that particular place right now, especially with the uh, coronavirus. Okay, this is uh, apparently. This month has been the worst month, which is to be expected. So um, we're just asking everybody to continue to hang in there, okay? And we did this uh, last time. So I thought what we do, <clears throat> just start with some city. Uh, Nakba Sensei seems to indicate that whenever he had a session with O Sensei, because he would work on something, then he'd go to O Sensei and ask, you know, his advice about this or that. And that O Sensei's soul was reaching out to his soul. It's a soul to soul communication, which is different than the beautiful words or something that was necessarily just human. One thing, Sadaharo with his battle coach was that was insane. And always having he's young and talented, he's having problems. So since that tells O's coach, he's the way. And wait. And wait. And in the process, the whole acquires almost an unshakable center, standing on one leg, waiting for the pitch. He got so good at it. And he's on one leg. Several other players would push on him. They couldn't budge him. One time he was posing for a camera shoot and an eight-year-old boy, unexpectedly, totally not rehearsed, jumped up, grabbed his arm. It wasn't even an inch of movement. So right here, so much change going on, or oh, much of it not good. I'm just sitting quietly and learning to wait. Waiting for what? The world to get better? Possibly. But the act of waiting. Just wait. There's a tendency to jump ahead on more. Wait if things get better. But you wait for wait. There's so much confusion out there.
She's crazy. And there's all those reasons not to wait. There's all those twists and everything going on. The color of things you know. It's somewhere behind that there is somebody who's willing to wait, becoming the most immovable center. And wait. And wait. Waiting is moment by moment. They get distracted. You spin off. Let the next moment so back to waiting. In the early Don Juan Carlos Castaneda books, Don Juan tells Carlos, how do you survive these first very difficult, unclear parts of your training? And he just said, well, know that you are waiting. And you are waiting for something. And what Don Juan told Carlos is what you're really waiting for is your power. And your power is not something about being able to affect to change things out there. It's just about being that immovable center like Mr. O had. And wait. If you get distracted in the moment, the next moment you're back to waiting. And one of the other things in the Don Juan books is impeccability. If you're waiting to get something, you're not impeccable. You wait to wait. Mr. O said, uh, well towards the end, he began to realize the act of waiting, which he was learning, learned about from those inside, was the most active thing in his life. Act of waiting, the act of being in the moment, the act of forging an almost immovable center. And the strength that we garner from that immovable center is what allow us to make it through this very difficult period. Republican senators, congressmen who were under attack are now saying you can't impeach a president out of office just to make things easy. There's nothing easy about waiting. And one of the hardest things from our viewpoint is the stupidity going on in the world. This can send us off spinning out of the waiting place. Wait anywhere. And the command word may vary depending on who you are. Yamato Musashi is put the five rings. So when you draw the sword, the broad sword, there's only one thought. That was cut. And that's very similar to Mr. O's.
The sensei said things like, if you don't understand Shin Kuno Ki, true emptiness, you can't really get what Akira is. So he's sort of describing a sacred place. You can do his eyes open, eyes closed, doesn't matter. And wait. And then wait. There starts to be a calm. Missing all that turmoil. And you may start to feel that calm well in your belly. You may start to feel that calm as a feel of your energy. Guess what? You continue to wait. And you start to feel the ground a bit. And as your flow is going up and down, down and up, guess what? You continue to wait. All of that while, the fortune is part of yourself, this immovable center. That's where power is. Listen to the news, keep updated. But learn to wait. Notice my breathing is calm and deep. Heartbeat, slow down the rhythm. Good. Wait some more. I noticed maybe I'm sorry to get pleased with myself because I'm waiting so well. Wait some more. All of a sudden, I start to think I've not waited enough. And I start to get very active. Continue to wait. Continue to wait. And wait. You caught yourself on movement patterns, circles, centers, spirals, waves. How each of them sort of has a type of vibration of aliveness, of vitalness. Continue to wait. 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 Go back to it at any time. So that's uh, something, you know, that, that oftentimes, you know, we maybe neglect. 
Okay, we're so caught up in movement. And we're also caught up in everything, starting to, we, you know, we are anticipating everything's going to get worse or better, or we're confused. Just learning that. I mean, no sense they didn't tell, give all uh, a number of tips about how to grip the bat or, or whatever. It just said, learn to wait. It was up to oh to take that lesson deeper, 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 deeper. So um, just you know, just being able to sit for 10, 15 minutes. You can use that or you can use centering or I think it's very good for our mental, physical emotional even our spiritual selves. Mm -hmm. And uh, sort of we were in a bit of war zone right now. And it's very important to develop that center within. Okay. Um, let's, uh, let's switch back to the big screen. We're in here for a little bit. We're going to try to uh, get a couple of good sort of furnace filters. We've been sort of not able to track them down because our furnace is 15 by 21 by 1. And uh, so we're probably just going to get in some air purifiers there, HEPA, and uh, try to use them for now. Uh, but let's see. So I'm going to try to move this and get, uh, oh, yes, I'm set up, but we have this um, thing here, should have been this way. Again, mind is scattered. You might find your ability to hold normal patterns of thought. Um, it is hard. But this allows us to get more of a full body shot from this. So we'll put this on. Yeah, and then, and then. Makes it a little better here. And I don't know what would happen, for example, if we were to twist this, whether I get a full body shot, you may have to shift the angle. Yeah, back here, for example. We get uh, narrower until you see the full body. Okay. And we start out a little bit with uh, okay. now we're going to go into the thirty movements, but just a couple of things. You know, just the fire water changes from up. Come down, come up, come down, figure eight. Come up, come down, everything to the figure eight starts here. Initially, everything's out there, it's confusing. Can you continue in one direction? You can reverse. Okay. And I like this because, you know, for example, it has a little bit of a tip. Okay, now when you're holding in the middle, a lot of times you're moving fast. It's difficult to keep tabs of what is the spiritual tip of the spear. For example, you say staff or spear. It's a little different. If it's a staff, 
a striking motion. Striking motion. If it's a spirit boom, that's a piercing motion. That can be a cutting motion. Boom. So it's a little different. Okay, and also the spear, for example, you don't want to block this, so you're going to bring it back here. You're going to use the other arm. Okay. And what you call in the middle, we have one. So, what do I do? So, then we let me just create the long end and the shorter end. So, we can do the figure eight. Right, and the long end is always the spear. Hmm. The real short step makes it a little more difficult to do. But when you're going here, for example, you know, you, boom, you can switch into the movements, which, you know, it's formed by ultimately boom, 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 boom. Okay. Now, for me, this motion contains another movement, and that motion contains that motion, and this motion contains that motion. And so that's oftentimes what I do. I don't uh, necessarily think about what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this motion, but within that motion, there's that motion and that motion. One movement has your next motion completed. And what I'm trying to do and figure that out, or I make a form out of it, that's not usually where I hang out. Okay. Boom. Boom. Moving freely, the moment is not an increment of time. The moment is a moment. Boom, 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 Posing for the camera, and then an eight year old boy jumped on his arm, and this wouldn't happen for me, but he didn't budge. Nobody could explain it, but even he couldn't explain it. <laughs> huh? Because he was just in his center. Okay, that was like, again, and it wasn't like a sleepy place, because he had to be able to boom. And you know, waiting doesn't mean wait for strike three. Waiting means in a lot of ways it's like right here, you're like a mirror. Boom. You're not too busy trying to figure things out. Boom. And you'll notice, for example, here, you know, I'm swinging with the arms. There's like a spring coiling right here. Where, boom. There's some motion that you don't. Boom. Too quick. Play. Play. Boom. Boom. So those are things to explore as well as learning the movements. Okay? Now, yeah, what we're going to do is we'll just go through 30 movements. Okay. But let's try it. For movement 20. 21 is a sweep. 22 is full kill chain. 23, two handed figure eight. 24, step back. 25, go back again. 26, turn to each hand. 27, thumb space away, grip. 28, right hand grip. Turn, sweep, grip. 29, thumb space. Thumb space away. Thumb space here. Okay. 
So Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Okay. Okay. Like everybody to try that on their own. Take it from. Movement number Okay, let's check in a little bit on that one. That's uh, last third. Anybody with a question for movements 21 through 30? Uh, it all just kind of goes by pretty fast and I haven't been able to pick up anything for real after 23. So maybe I should just work on 24 today. And okay. just work. Do you think that I know it, but I don't. I know it in a different way. Okay. 21, 22, 23 goes this side down, the other side down and up, and then back here. 23. I remember 23 because it's Draymond Green's number. Twenty-four. You switch hands, step back. Twenty-five is the first of the fire water changes. It's just like a, a wall walk. Thumb, right hand, thumb down with a step back. Okay, so twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Okay, and it looks like that. Yeah. Energy, when you start to get like 22 to 23. Okay, yeah. Um, for 27, is that a fire or water change like in front of you? Yeah, 27. See, the fire water change is thumb down from the top, but here it's thumb face away. So you can do it here, or you can do it up here. Okay? So, 25 stepped out, 26, 27, my grab, and that comes grabbing with the right hand. A 28 starts when you grip with the left hand, but you sweep, cut, turn. 29 and 30. See, I didn't necessarily ever learn the movements because I go the other way. I'm not trying to learn the movements to get somewhere, all right? Basically, you know, for, for me, everything just was like this. Boom, 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 boom. Then I had to kind of give it a structure. That's hard. I don't think that way. So when I'm answering questions, question, sometimes I have to check the movement. 
I don't memorize the movements. Okay, when I do that, everything uh, becomes very, how should I put it, but this is an attempt to take what's sacred and bring that sacred feeling into a social setting. So for that reason, we're doing it by the numbers. I don't think by the numbers, okay? But if you have a question, I'll muddle around a little bit in the numbers till I come up with an answer. I don't know them by the numbers. But in doing what we're doing, it may be a step you need, okay? So yeah, okay? So you go here, step back, this fire water change, right in from the top, from them, here now, it's fire water change, but in a different plane, here, boom, 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 boom. Okay? See, for me, that last part is the most fun, because when I can sort of go here, Okay? I'm in the moment with it. And it's vital. When you're in the moment with it, you can't be thinking about it. On the other hand, learning it by doing that may be a step to get you in the moment. Okay? So we're kind of at that particular place. So what we're going to try, maybe we got a little time today, is where everybody gets a feel for going from twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, and three. And trying to get to where you get some level of Okay, so that, that that's quite a that's quite a jump, but there's a lot more energy. That's why sometimes if you're learning the movements, certain things are really hard because there's more energy to them. Okay, is that challenging? Yeah. But what's challenging for me is to take that and bring it into numbers. Okay, so you know we go from different directions. Okay, but uh, let's try it. I'm gonna put myself on the big screen again. So we're gonna go here. So let's go. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. 23, 24. Let's just take that. 21, 22, 23, 24. Mm -hmm. From a different angle. And try that on your own. Okay, how's that going? 
So we go from 20 to 21 to 24. Anybody? Uh, one question, Sensei, on 24. I'll I'll show real fast, but is it as well? Um, is it a simple way of moving one hand sliding forward, stepping back, and swapping? Well, see, the thing you got to realize is I don't know. So I got to go here. This is 23, 24. Then you step back. Okay. I'll do it one more time. I have to go into the motion. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. See, I go from motion and the motion has a form. I don't go from how do I connect the dots form to form. I don't go that way. My mind doesn't work that way. I'm kind of like Sherlock Holmes, you know what I mean? If I'm just sitting around, I'll probably be shooting up because life is very hard. If I had to go from linear that way, I, I, I don't know what I do, but this is a challenge, okay? This is a challenge, okay? Anybody else on? That is that a little clearer for other people that change? What? Boom. Boom. Yeah. That's a lot clearer. Thank you, Sensei. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So what I'm trying to do is like we're speaking two different languages. So we have to kind of do that way. I don't think. 23, 24. For me, that motion is in the moment. It's sacred. It's real hard for me to break it up and make it social. Okay. But that's that was uh, the task of Sensei gave me. So here we are. Okay. So 23, 24, 25. and step back. Twenty four. Twenty five. Try adding that motion. Okay, check in a little bit. Uh, is that 25 uh, a little clearer? It's a little clearer, but I don't know how much, how many times I spin the darn thing. Like, is it 360 degrees, 720 degrees? I don't know. This is one, okay, starts out pointing away. Going away, this is through sixties. Okay, now point away. Point away. It's three sixty rotation. Thank you, Sanchez. Okay. Now here, see I'm going down. The other side goes down and up, and then there's a motion to cover. Step back. What is that? Well, that's another 360. But to fire a lot of change, you get much more the center circle. Okay. Now here, now here, point away, point away. Good. Now, even this motion seems has a little bit of pizzazz to it.
thumb sprays, tip safe, it's not going towards you. Thumbs away, thumb sprays, and back. Okay, now let's try this. Five is slow, but connected. So try that on your own. See if you can slow the thing down and begin to get 21 through 30. Okay, let's check in a little bit. Well, I feel like I got 24 and 25, so that's that's huge. <laughs> yeah, Now I'm going to try something a little different with you. You don't know the form per se. Let's see if you can just sort of mess around with it. Just move. Explore the fire water changes, just move. Okay, good. That's what 21 through 30 is supposed to get you to do. Okay, now let's go through the actual movements. Oops. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, Eight, nine, and three. Okay. Now, you may or may not be able to follow. We're going to change the tempo of it. Okay, now what I want you to do is just move, mess around. Just move, mess around. 
Just move, mess around. Okay, let's uh, check in a little bit. Okay, while you are learning the movements, you don't stop just moving. Okay? Good, now let's go back. Okay, we're gonna start with number 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, Okay, now we're going to do it at a different tempo. Okay, in other words, at some point, the different tempo will start to slow down for you. Okay, so we're going to Now I'm just going to have you try movements number 21 through 30 on your own. Okay, you checking in for a little bit? Anybody with a, uh, is that changing for you? Well, I, I did notice during the freestyle that my movement was freer, so yay. Um, yeah, well, you know, the actual, you know, uh, it's not so much freestyle, I, I just call it, it's in improvisation, They're a little different, okay. I remember one time I was talking to Art Frank about free forming, and he said improvising. So it's not a musical term, but uh, uh, improvise means there's a situation, and you're improvising within the situation. Okay. Free form oftentimes is the situation. Okay? So you're still giving yourself a situation that you can improvise within. Now, as you start to do that increasingly, it becomes free form. Okay? So if you can just sort of begin to move. A lot of people can't do that. Good. Now we're also working on a series of movements. Okay. So let's go back.
21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Okay. Now we're going to alter the tempo. Let's try that louder again. Okay. Okay. Let's try it again. Now let's slow it down. Slow it down again. Okay. Now let's alter the tempo again. Now, try it on your own again, 21 through 30. Okay, let's check in here a bit. Is that getting a little clearer? Movements 21 through 30. I'm still fuzzy on 26 through 30, but 24 oh. and 25 are pretty clear now. 23, 24, 25. 26 is just turn over your head. 27 is fire water change, but like the hell about it. 28, you're doing a two step sweep cut. 29, you're changing sides. Okay. Your brain can only handle so much information, but your system, mind, body, when it's in a flow state, can do things that. See, the brain will impose limitations on you, okay? Elmer Fudd, trying to think like Bugs Bunny, probably will go into a lot of problems. It's a shift, okay? And, you know, for example, for the Wiley Coyote to Think like the roadrunner. Wiley Coyote would have to get rid of all his planning and all his goal-oriented thoughts to be free. That's really hard. 
See, those are all archetypes. And so one of the things is that, you know, you, you attack it in several ways. One, you learn the movements slowly. Two, and you know, it's not necessarily a set one, two, three order. You learn to kind of mess around. Boom, 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 boom. Where you just move. Three, then you try the, uh, the original movement set 21 through 30, but you do it at a different tempo. Okay. See, for me, okay. I'm going to go through the different tempos. Not that I'm doing the numbers smoothly, but you know, using you know, like, like science fantasy. That's Elric in battle, and Stormbringer is singing a song. Elric is not getting in the way. Okay. Okay. Now, if he's you know, thinking what to do with you know, the sword itself, sings and moves. Okay, so it's a different thing. I'm, I'm much more like that than I am, uh, you know, okay, how does this move me? I'm sure Elric had fencing lessons. Okay, but when he got Stormbringer, he was smart enough just to get out of the way. But he also realized the sword had its own agenda. And he didn't necessarily want to draw it all, you know, unless it was really very important. So the actual sense runs in. And one of the archetypes that comes up right there is you're kind of a cosmic protector. You pick up the the magic spear, you know, with the sense that you know you are sweeping away, you know, all the negativity around you. Which to be honest with you, these days you got a ton of. Anyway, that's I'm gonna move back here for a little bit. Where are we? Okay, we're recording. Okay, so we're going to go back here. Okay, my mask is uh, sliding down. So we're going to fix it. Uh, like what I may do. Since we're not moving, we'll shift here. Okay. So if we would have a little bit more time, what we would have done is we would have taken each of those movements, boom, you know, just like a bullpen cut. You know, just that. Okay. Um, level one, using Star Trek archetypes. Level one is impulse power. And you, ideally, you don't just move around in impulse power. You there's impulse power, but you're also learning about the coordinates that you need to set to use warp drive. If you go into warp drive without setting the coordinates. It could be a disaster. Okay. Captain, where are we? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So, you know, the sense right there. Now, work drive, you know, comes in more levels three and four of the, you know, what we're talking about the certification. But the ability, for example, to these are learning work draw, impulse power, 
then you can move around an impulse power. And you're studying how to set coordinates. Okay? And that's really levels one and two. But level two, when you can, you can navigate as opposed to go from destination to destination, even if it's an impulse power. And you're learning about the coordinates. You're still learning about how to set the coordinates for work life. Okay. And then level three, when you boom, you come boom, that's kind of the ignition. Okay, we got the coordinates set. We understand how to navigate warp drive. And level four is where you, everything's in. Is that boom right there? That's a little bit like you know, you're you're at warp nine, traveling really fast to prevent the Klingons from taking over. But that would be my Star Trek explanation of the four. So one, you're a Star Trek Academy and you're going to learn to move. Two, you're actually getting experience in space, learning how to navigate, and you're starting to go into like warp drive and how to set the coordinates. Not warp drive yet. And level three is when you boom, can go boom and boom. What you're really doing is this. Okay, you've got the starship. And all of a sudden, you're going to open up hyperspace and go this way. If you do it wrong, you might pull the first half of the starship into hyperspace and blow the whole thing up. So you, boom, you're very careful. Boom, 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 boom. Each one, boom, boom, boom. You practice on making sure everything is set. You really know how to go from where you are with the coordinates, boom, into warp drive. Then the last one is like, okay, you got to really be able to wing it. So those are just ways I would say of, of explaining that it's, uh, okay. See, Elmer Fudd can do level one. Bugs Bunny can do level two. Level three is very interesting because you don't go too dark with level three. You get Wiley Coyote. Okay? Because these are martial forms. I'm going to blow the road on them. I'm going to trap them this way. Okay. But because I think each of those things, you know, is for a larger purpose. Okay. And level four, whoa, you, you're the road runner. You're fast. You're so natural that everything that's opposed to this freedom explodes back on itself. So all the wily coyotes of the world, well, oh, since it was like the road runner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we the kind of use archetypes, okay? Bugs Bunny is a really good level two. And Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd is a whole different feel set to them. And so as much as we're using the movements, whether you talk about Starfleet Academy or Warner Brothers cartoons, you see there's a, I would like to see, you know, and, and maybe it won't happen. You get level one. Okay, you're a self-feed academy. Elmer Fudd probably functions, okay, in his Elmer Fudd universe, okay. But he functions. Level two, you take that and you still function, but you're cool with it. That's Bud's money. Level three, you know, you're back at Starfleet Academy studying the Kobayashi Maru <laughs> to use a starship. This situation, that situation, that situation, that situation, that situation, that situation. You know, and you're good at that. And all of a sudden, 
You get the Kobayashi Maru. Okay. And level four is more like warp drive where you solve the Kobayashi Maru. That's what it's sort of supposed to be. Um, let's check. So, does that make sense to anybody? Anybody on that one? Does it make sense to anybody? Doesn't have to make left brain sense. I think it makes sense to me, Sensei. The yeah, good. One through three, and then uh, the three to four is the transition I'm still playing with, but I think it makes sense. Well, could you repeat about the three and four? You're going to have to understand it your own way. I could just sort of explain mine, and you have to kind of play around with it. What I say made perfect sense. The Osensei stuff made perfect sense to Osensei. And it made almost no sense to anybody else. Was it important? Oh, yeah. Okay. So do you have to be a Star Trek person? No. But I'm just mapping it out for using popular culture archetypes. For most of us, it's interesting. The Warner Brothers cartoons are probably better. Okay. We could say something like, okay, there's Donald Duck. And there's Mickey Mouse. Okay. Mickey Mouse is cool. Donald Duck isn't. You know, you, you start going from level one to level two, Donald Duck is going to throw a fit. <laughs> Mickey Mouse, you know, we put on his sorcerer's cap and figure it out. Okay. Mickey Mouse is cool. Donald Duck isn't. Okay. And so, you know, all of this, we have this Donald Duck archetype in us, and we're, we're kind of like, Donald Duck would go nuts in the, you know, in, the, in, in the pandemic. And we're battling that Donald Duck side of us, you know, to stay okay. In fact, you know, I mean, I, I don't know, the, the Duck universe, uh, um, it's funny, his nephews are much cooler than he is. If you watch DuckTales and there's a I used to watch it with my daughter. Okay. But anybody, um, so you know, it, it, you know, you use what you use. The, the the imagery I use may not work for you. That's why you gotta mess around. Okay. Um I mean, if you were to kind of go, what is Level one. Well, I think there's this uh, character in the DC universe called the Guardian. He walks around with a shield. He's not Captain America. And he's pretty tough. And he protects people on the street. Okay. Level two is, um, it's interesting. Level two is more like the Flash. Because uh, there's one cartoon where, you know, he's a superhero, right? He's got super speed. And so, you know, somebody wants him to do something. It happens in Joseph in the movie. And he says, you know, I, 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 can, I can catch up to the purse snatchers and stuff like that, but I'm a wimp. I move fast. And then he's got to discover that he can vibrate through things and travel through time. And he can move around so fast, even though he can't lift it, the, the, the energy that he creates can lift something, you know. But, you know, initially his thing is, yeah, I'm super fast. What does that get me? I can't fly. I can't lift two tons, you know? But, you know, so level three is, is kind of like uh, Green Lantern, you know, who kind of has a fancy device and can do things with it. And then level four is kind of where you get the, the Wonder Woman, the, the Superman, the, the Thors, you know, all that. So it's it's a level four is uh, pretty trippy. Anybody with a question or comment on that? Well, okay. Anybody? All right. So you know that that the point of it is, is that you can learn the movements better, but 
ideally, there's a shift to go from level one to level two. And say this is Audrey. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Audrey. Hey, sorry, I'm still having trouble with my mic. So, uh, uh, I think this um, really helps me understand those four levels. I think there's not, no rude. Sensei Nadru have it on his web page, these levels. I saw it somewhere, maybe in Wikipedia. Oh, really? Okay. Well, you know, you anything you can kind of go like four levels. But, but it didn't yeah. make any sense until you, you elaborate on it. And hmm. and it's um the archetypes are really powerful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, be, because really what it is, is, is that, you know, if you look at O-sensei, now do sensei you know, said something like, you know, that everybody, you know, in the 60s at Hongu Dojo looked at O-sensei and said, well, I've been doing Aikido for 50 years, I'll be like you. And, you know, actually, you know, what, what it was, was, I mean, somebody like uh, Robert Frazier or Robert Miguel, they were from a different culture. And they, they kind of caught that you could do Aikido for, for three lifetimes and not necessarily, or incarnations and not necessarily get to where our sensei was. That, that he was doing something, it was a major shift of consciousness, not just time in, 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 in the temporal sense, better movement. Okay. So, you know, I, I mean, we have our Elmer Fudd, Donald Duck days. In fact, when you're in the pandemic and you're stuck in them, you feel essentially frustrated and powerless. You know, so at that particular point, just being easier, right? You're, you're more in the, the, the Bugs Bunny, uh, Mickey Mouse thing, right? Mickey Mouse is a lot cooler than Donald Duck. Donald Duck loses it. Elmer Fudd loses it. And yeah, we're, we're, we, we can lose it too. Because you get, you know, you can learn this and then you try to do a different level and you're just, you just, you just, you know, that wrestling weather. Okay, you see what I mean? So it's a shift in more than just, okay, I can do the moves. Okay. But, you know, if you if we can start to go from, you know, like Elmer Fudd and Donald Duck, I mean, if you want to use the Donald term, we had a president named Donald, you know, whose combination of Donald Duck and the Roadrunner, not the Roadrunner, but the, the Wiley Coyote, it could be very vengeful, could be da, 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 da. A lot of power, smart kind of, but on the other hand, not integrated. Okay, so you can get little bits and pieces of it, but shifting from the level one, which is okay. I'm sure Elmer Fudd or, 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 or Donald Duck could learn the 30. Okay, and you know, it's not saying Mickey Mouse would get it, but he'd be a lot easier. And, and uh, probably Bugs Bunny would, you know. You know, what's up, Doc, and do it, right? And that's a shift of archetypes. The level three is a little, as I said, it's a little different. It's a little bit like, you know, uh, again, you know, uh, level one and two. If you, you can kind of just be a little cooler with things and easier with things and realize the importance of your own mental physical, emotional balance. What you need is the capacity to be very easy and cool. That's a big step. Other than that, you know, you're Donald Duck or you're, well, and, and you try to go from levels one to two and level two will, will just drive you nuts, okay? And I'm sure with enough practice, Elmer Fred can do the movements and qualify for level one and copy a level two. But there'll always be something missing. Well, Donald Duck can just on a good day do level two, but chances are something's gonna upset his apple cart. You go from two to three, he just go, ah, okay? <laughs> so, 
<laughs> it's, it's kind of interesting that if you were to kind of go through the, you know, like the Warner Brothers Disney cartoon characters, there's such a seminal part of us that it works better than the, the god goddess stuff, right? And, you know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a realization that it's kind of important to realize the roadrunner is pretty advanced state. The Roadrunner is not just cool. The Roadrunner is so in harmony with things that if negativity or danger comes, it explodes back on itself. He just lets Wiley Coyote outsmart himself again and again and again. And he's, you know, he's just a Roadrunner. And I'm sure Osen said, you know, just. Here I am, here's the universe, here's how it works, here's this beauty, power, intelligence, and this loving and it's harmonious. So when you come at me, you break the harmony, the harmony reestablishes itself. I appear to do this or that. So he was kind of like the road runner. Yeah, he was powerful because uh, the universe is powerful. And so, you know, that, that shift, you know, where, where it's so fluid that the scheming self that once results in power constantly runs into itself when it tries to go from three to four. If we're too controlling, we can't be like those things. If we're too sloppy, we don't get it. Now, nobody, as far as I know, in the Aikido world has really gotten it. There are some people that are very good and talented, they got really a major thing from Osensei. Osensei was Osensei. And if you asked his best students, you know, are you like Osensei? They would probably be pretty honest, unless they're deluded. I was joking with Ano Sensei once, said, hey, you're starting to look like Osensei out there. These things are really great stuff. The Linda Holiday Sensei summer thing. And he just turned white. And then he gave me a long lecture about, careful what you say. And then, you know, he just started lecturing me about if I really wanted to be like Osensei, I would have to do all these things and give up A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and refer. This is the reason why he didn't want, you know, he, 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 you know, he says you couldn't joke about those things, okay? Which is very cultural. But, you know, the thing is, I mean, if you do lock, Point is, he was doing some things that, that I say were, wow, that was kind of like a no sense thing. Somebody would attack him, he'd start a, a GI way before the attack, and there'd be all this energy moving, the person would get thrown. I thought, like, wow, the sensei was probably kind of like that, right? And so I, I thought, hey, you're beginning to look like him, and he just turned white. It was really fascinating to watch, okay? And, you know, we're a little freer because we're from a different culture. But you also, when you're taking what's sacred, and for Amo Sensei, I was talking about something that was sacred to him in terms that was not fitting. And so I got the reaction I got. And so, you know, when you're working the archetypes, right? I mean, it's a bit like Superman, you know, going to the Justice League satellite and writing graffiti on the walls. He wouldn't do it. Right? Or with Batman going to the Batcave and messing it up just to mess it up. He wouldn't do it. You know, so, you know, there's an area right there where, you know, the sacred is the sacred. And sometimes you can get in the way by being too strict about it or being too cultural about it. But you also mess it up because you're too loose with it and don't respect it. And so, you know, if you respect, if we respect ourselves in a certain way, we handle the sacred in the way that we're supposed to. Because culturally, period in history, what's sacred is always being reframed, but it's also always itself. But uh, Yaro, it seems just when I was watching, you pretty much have the movements. Now, I'll caution it this way. You have it today. <laughs> and you can wake up tomorrow and not remember it at all. I'm for an hour. 
that's part of the journey, right? That's just part of the journey. You can write it down, and then tomorrow you can say, I, I don't understand my notes. It's, you know, that's part of the sacred too. And so you gotta be very easy to be able to laugh at yourself. See, Bugs Bunny can laugh at himself. Elmer Fudd can't, all right? Donald Duck has an easier side, okay? But when he loses it, you can't talk to him. He just throws a Donald Duck fit, okay? And Mickey Mouse is kind of like, he can commit mistakes, he can do a lot of things. But Donald Duck, when he gets in that crazy zone, you know, he just can't handle it. It's usually his nephews that pull him out, okay? <laughs> All right. So we're, we're, we're kind of in a, a different zone then. When you go from, you know, you get level two, that's pretty good because you, you, you can, you know, level one can limit your function. Level two, you can function in your core. So there's space for things to happen, all right? You're not the road runner of level two. You know, you can be Mickey Mouse. And, and the thing about Mickey Mouse is when he puts a sorcerer in that, he messes up, but ultimately he's going to be able to put that hat on. That would be the level four Mickey Mouse with his hat, right? So, yeah, I mean, you know, that I hope the, the the certification. That's what we're kind of going through. Is that you know, it's not just that you level one learns how to do the movements without stopping. That's a step. If you can get that, you're fine. But there's a shift in consciousness. Don't stop. You don't stop. Level one never stops. Level two never stops. Level three never stops. Level four never stops. We never stop switching from archetype to archetype. And most of the time, we get caught up in the real lesser ones. And so a shift of consciousness where we can, can shift out of the lesser archetypes into the the more inclusive, more self-oriented, not ego-oriented, the healthier we are. Anyway, uh, I think that's it for today. So thank you for tuning in. We'll be doing a Tai Chi kind of club meeting tonight. Okay, so we'll, we'll, I'm just going to get somewhere this warm. But thank you. Thank you, Santa. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Cheryl. Yeah. Bye. Good to see you all. Good to see you also. Um, gonna see if I can save all those messages you wrote me about 24 and 25 and all that before. I... If not, I saved the text also. I, it was actually oh, can helping you me. It, can you just send it to me? Because <laughs> I'm on my, I on have my a, head. I have a um, question. Yeah. Has Sensei been putting out any videos lately? Um, and I'm not I don't getting know, whatever's on the email list. I, I, I don't know. 